Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Reynolds with Bored, Better Off Reading Every Day. Today's book is Who Wants to Be a Poodle? I Don't by Lauren Child. In a sumptuous apartment in a fashionable city lived the elegantly rich and divinely glamorous Madame Verdi Brule. Verdi Brule did little with her time but shop her shoes and visit the beauty parlor to have her wrinkles smooth and her eyelashes lengthened. She was the kind of person who liked everything to be just so. Along with Verdi Bule, with her very own personal bedroom, lived Trixie Twinkletoes, Trot a Lot Delight, or Trixie Toes for short, or Trixie Twinkle Bell, or Trixie Bell Baby, depending on Verdi's mood. The little poodle lived in the lap of luxury with every creature comfort just a manicured paw away. There was a maid to plump her cushions and a cook to prepare her nibbles and a butler to carry her over the puddles. And she was much adored by Mademoiselle Brule. But Trixie Twinkletoes was not happy. For, for a start, she didn't like her name. It was too poodly. She didn't like her puffing or poofing or preening. She didn't like to be posing or the prancing. She didn't like the perfuming, the powdering, or the pom-poms. And she didn't like the way her owner, Verdi Brule, would keep dressing her up in little pink ponchos. The thing was, Trixie Twinkletoes just wasn't poodle sort of person. No, I am just not cut out for the life of poodlery. I want to step in puddles. But of course, she kept these thoughts to herself. Madame Verdi, Brule never went out in the weather. If the weather was wet or indeed cloudy, stormy, snowy, or in fact anything but fine. Her shoes were very expensive and she could not risk them getting spoiled. This meant the two of them were usually stuck inside their apartment. Verdi Brule idly flicking through the shoe catalogs while Trixie Twinkletoes would chew on her pink velvet ribbon. And it was an uneventful life for both of them. On fine days, the two of them would go out prancing in the park. Through Verdi never permitted the little poodle to stray from the path for fear of muddy paws. Trixie Twinkletoes would pee over at the other dog scamper would peer looking over at the other dog scampering about with sticks, paddling in puddles and chasing nothing in particular. That's what a real dog should do, she would think, sighing deep sigh. <sighs> Madame Brule often mistook those sighs 
for little coughs and would wrap another little scarf around poor Trixie Twinkletoe's neck. One night, Trixie Twinkletoes was lying in her room, listening to real dogs howling at the moon. As far as she could tell, they were all called names like Growler, Grippler, Tromper, Squasher. That's what a dog's name should be, thought Twixie, Trix, Trixie Twinkletoes, looking into her full-length mirror. But what she saw just didn't look like someone who would ever be called Squasher. Pomp pom pompomed toy poodles just aren't. I hate being a poodle, she howled in a most on poodle like manner. Which woke Madame Brule from her ebon anxious dreams. She popped on her kitten heel mules, clip clapped her way down the corridor. Bertie Brule took a good look at Trixie Twinkletoes, trot a lot delight and said, heavens, what is the matter with you, my forlorn furry friend? And she rang, the, rang for the maid who summoned the vet, who after con concocting many tests and treatments could find nothing wrong with the little dog other than a slightly sore throat. To cheer her up, the following day, Verdi Brule took Trixie Twinkletoes to Poodle Parlor Hound heaven. Under the dryer, idly fick flickling through the latest issue of Posh Pooch Monthly, she noticed an article titled, How to Change Your Dog's Image. It showed a photograph of an unruly, scruffy looking dog, and next to it, a picture of the same dog, all neat and tidy. And the words, three months later, of course she thought, if a dog can be cleaned and preened, then it can also be scuffed and roughed. I will change my image, she said, as she sipped her, sipped her cappuccino. Both, of course, no one was, but of course, no one was listening. The very next day, Trixie Twinkletoes chased a cat, caught some fleas, and chewed Mr. Chalomi's newspaper. Bertie Brule uttered alarmed, telephoned her pet psychic to see if she could find out just what strange force was troubling her little dog. Mr. Unganardi looked into Mademoiselle Verdi Brule's teacup, but could see nothing but two lonely tea leaves. Then he looked at Trixie Twinkletoe's paw and said, I am getting a weird sensation. A sense, a thousand tiny teeth. I feel itchy. Oh, good grief. I have caught the fleas. I foresee a trip to the pet parlor. Bertie Brule had Trixie Twinkletoes kept indoors, defleed, and given another helping of the finest dishy dog food. Trixie Twinkletoes felt relieved. She found cats boring, fleas itchy, and newspapers rather bland.
One rainy day later, Trixie Trinkle Toes was watching TV when she popped a commercial for the greatest dog act on earth. The voice said, be astounded, be amazed, be bamboozled by the performing poodle sisters. And then she saw the words, dazzlingly dangerous, daring dogs. Trixie Twinkletoes had never even heard a poodle being dangerous or daring, but she liked the idea of it. I will become dangerous and daring, she said, hopping off her pile of feather cushions, but who would believe such a thing, even if they had had been listening? On Tuesday, the doorman caught Trixie Twinkletoes sliding down the banister. Mr. Eccles thought he saw her swinging on the chandelier. And Mrs. Glover, Mrs. Grover, the dog walker, swore she spotted Trixie Twinkletoes diving into the ornamental fountain. Verdi Brule, shocked by this astonishing behavior, ran ran down to the doorman who ordered a cat to drive a car to drive Trixie Twinkletoes. Trot, trot a lot delight and pooch to the psychiatrist on the double quick step on it. The psychiatrist got Trixie Twinkletoes to do some very tricky tests. He even hypnotized, he even hypnosis, but he just could not discover what was wrong. At last, exasperated, he sighed. What is the trouble, my small canine client? <sighs> I want to stick my head out of the car window and feel the wind in my ears. I want to bark at dogs in the street. I want to catch sticks and roll in the mud. I want to be dangerously daring. But most of all, I want to step in puddles. But of course, the psychiatrist could not understand. By the time they stepped out of the psychiatrist's office, the rain was pouring down and the beautiful pools of water were forming everywhere. Trixie looked longingly at the deep gray puddles, but said nothing until suddenly Trixie Tinkletoes heard a terrible sound. It was the howl of a tiny drowning hound. In one dazzling moment, she slid down the railing took a daring leap into the air and dangerously dived into the deepest puddle. Verdi Boulet, fearing her little dog was in great danger, waded in after her, instantly ruining her shoes. But to Verdi's astonishment, there was Trixie Tinkletoes, not drowning, but holding up the bedragged chihuahua. What a dog, exclaimed the owner. You have saved a little gripper from certain death. Verdi Brule looked at Trixie Twinkletoes and saw not a little pompered toy poodle, but instead a dazzlingly dangerous, daring dog. Trixie Tinkletoes barked and suddenly, Verdi Brule understood every word. From that day on, Mademoiselle Verdi Brule and Trixie Twinkletoes eagerly read the weather pages, and if it was raining, they went out with all their other dogs and Verdi never made Trixie Twinkletoes wear a hat, scarf, or even a poncho ever again. Though however much Trixie Twinkletoes tried, she just could not get Verdi to understand one important thing. Trixie Twinkletoes 
trot a lot delight dazzlingly dangerous daring dogs do not like to be called silly names the end boys and girls of who wants to be a poodle i don't there's the cover I'm going to go back to the page that I think was one of the best pages. But to, Ver to Verdi's astonishment, there was Trixie Tinkletoes, not drowning, but holding up the, bedragged, the, the bedraggled chihuahua. What a dog, exclaimed the owner. You have saved little Gripper from certain death. Birdie Brulee looked at Trinkly Trixie Twinkletoes and saw not a little pompered toy poodle, but instead a dazzlingly dangerous daring dog. Trixie Twinkletoes barked and suddenly Birdie Brulee understood every word. Understood every word. There it is. She finally got it. She just wanted to be a dazzlingly dangerous daring dog who happened to save another dog and get a little dirty boys and girls that is the end of this story i chose this story because i wanted to show you here's my poodle it is actually a pocketbook can you see you can put things in here look you can put things in there it's actually a pocketbook nice right can you see it Hello, baby. Can you see it? Boys and girls, I chose this book because I have heard that a lot of my kids are getting pets during this time. I think I mentioned to you Bogey. One young man got... Um, at the beginning of quarantine and now I know another young man and his sister also got a dog named Scout and um, I also know of another child a little girl who got a dog named Teddy so all of you guys are getting all of these fabulous pets that you need to know you need to take care of they're lovable they're sweet they bring you a lot of love they need to be walked like this one you see here. The Bratz is taking him for a walk on his leash. You see the leash here? They need to be walked. They cannot stay inside all day. They need their exercise and they need to go to the bathroom and they need to eat. As much as you love them, they cannot just live on love alone. They need for you to really get out there and take care of them. Walking, feeding, which is food and water to keep them hydrated. Just like you have to be uh, kept hydrated, they need to be kept hydrated. They need fresh air, they need to run around, they need to exercise. They need to be well taken care of. So big boys and girls, I want you to prove to your parents that you can do it, that you can help to take care of your new member of the family, your new pet, your new boy or girl dog. You're willing to do that and you're capable of doing it and you're learning how to do it. I myself had a dog some time ago and her name was Saratoga. She was a German Shepherd and she was about 80 pounds. She was a very, very big dog and we had her for quite some time. She grew up with my daughter and they got along very, very well. She was very, very protective, even though I was worried that she was too much of a big dog. My daughter, when she was little, actually used to ride on her back, and she seemed to love it. I would not suggest that. I would not <laughs> suggest that. It used to make our heart go, Whoo. but they grew up together, and they fell in love with each other, and Toga has now passed, and going on to dog heaven and we think of her often but I just wanted to say to you when you have a dog that comes into your home a member of your family your pet please give them love and take care of them 
just like we did. Now, boys and girls, it is Miss Reynolds with Board. Better off reading every day. Here are my poodles. Here's another one right here. And you saw my poodle right here. And there are a couple of dog movies out there that I would suggest that you watch that might be fun to watch now that you have a new pet in the house. Beethoven, any of the Beethovens, Beethoven, Beethoven the second and Beethoven the third. Also, Balto, it's kind of a cartoony one, but it is very good. It's about a brave dog and some brave dogs. And of course, Lady and the Tramp, my very, very favorite. You know I'm a big lady fan and the Tramp fan. That's a good one. So those four I would suggest you watch. Now that you have a pet in the house and you want to uh, check out how other people live with their pets, especially their dogs. It has been my pleasure to bring this to you. And thank you so much for bringing up good memories for me of my dog Saratoga and also understanding where this poodle is coming from. I'll see you soon. Bye boys and girls. Bye Teddy. Bye Bogey. Bye Scout. Welcome to the family. Bye.